be able to. No, it's okay. Hey, so sorry, gentleman in the front here. What's your What's your name? Hey, Russell, how you doing? I'll talk straight to you because you're the only person here. Uh, so probably you knew we hold, we held a hackathon. You were there. Were you? I didn't hey, even wait. recognize you. Wait a second. Turn your badge around. Let's make sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Excellent. Yeah. Well, oh, cool. congratulations. Uh, so I, since there's nobody new here, I guess I just talked to you like, like normal. What we're going to do is we're going to hold more of them. So we sent out a, a survey to you guys to get more information about what you think is awesome about it. Get the comfy chair, yeah. Um, and what you want to see, because this one obviously was themed around bringing new technologies like cloud and IOE into the mix, but we also want to hold collaboration-specific ones, like the new Tropo acquisition, getting people in and do that stuff directly. Uh, we want to give away seed money, I guess is a way to think of it, you know, to people. We're interested in getting you shoulder to shoulder with our engineers so you can find bugs for us, I mean, <coughs> uh, expose functionality for us. Um, but it's really, uh, it's, it's exciting. I like doing it. I like having uh, a good time over the night and, and learn stuff. I always learn stuff. I mean, I see, I, I sit down to work on somebody's code with them and I'm like, I see something they do or like, oh, that was a slick little command there or what's that tool? Uh, it's always good for me to do this. So we're going to do more. Um, hopefully we'll have bigger, better, awesome. I, I don't know if we'll do like the Salesforce million dollar prize, maybe eventually. Um, but we, uh, we obviously have a complicated set of things that we have to deal with in integrating all these different technologies. But that's part of the fun. It's a different challenge. And I, I think I, um, I wouldn't want it any other way. If it was just like, use the Twitter API to create something interesting, you tend to get the same thing again and again. But when you say, Use all these technologies any way you see, sh see fit to build whatever business potential or a solution you want to do, then it becomes, more, I think, honestly, more difficult, but at the same time, I think, more interesting. I think that's what's fun about it. So um, is there anything else you want to know about hackathons or what, what our plans are? I mean, we just, we just want to do more of them. Try to, yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll I, we probably won't do it like with Intel's doing, like a road show. I don't know if we have enough money for that or yeah. enough will, and because it's exhausting. But at least at every Cisco Live, we'll end up doing them. Uh, at least, hopefully, the weekend before. I think our first one we did last year in San Francisco, we did the, the like on the event, like Wednesday, Thursday. And you know, we not a lot of people showed up or wanted to stay because it's a lot of effort to do that during the midweek. So. Um, uh, Charles, I'm going to have have talk about the IETF ones that we're planning on doing, and we sponsor with the IETF and do some right. stuff there. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. So, um, yeah, first of all, hats off to you guys for uh, still being here. You know, I it's really rough to start off your week of Cisco Live with a 24-hour you know uh, you coding thing. Know it. And uh, yeah, yeah, Mike they too. Pay me to be here. Uh, so yeah, yeah. you know that that is really uh, that's really an accomplishment just in and of itself to still be standing at this point. So uh, I'm glad you have nice, uh, comfortable chairs. Um, if you fall asleep, I I, I won't be mad at you. Um, Mike was mentioning that yeah, we will be having other hackathons and the exact cadence of those. I think we figure out and. This one at Cisco Live probably features the most in terms of Cisco technologies, right? Because we try to bring them all together. But we have other ones, uh, for example, the IETF hackathon. Now, this is not a Cisco event. That's why it's actually called the IETF hackathon. We hold it in conjunction with the IETF. Are you guys familiar with IETF? OK. So sort of a similar format. The weekend before IETF, we have a hackathon. Um, those guys aren't quite as diehard as you are, so we don't try to make them stay up uh, 24 hours. Instead, we break it up. Uh, it's pretty much from 9 to 9 on Saturday and uh, uh, from like 9 to 4 the next day. But still, you know, a pretty good chunk of time to get people together in a room. There, the idea is, rather than just focusing solely on Cisco technologies, it's on all IETF technologies. And really, the goal there is take the standards that are being developed within the IETF and let's put some running code behind them um, so that we can either verify the standard works or 
maybe uh, doing some exploration before you even, like very early on before you even have a working group. Let's just see if an idea works or how difficult it is to do um, so that we can get some feedback that then goes into the IETF meetings, which are the next week. So that's really the goal there is to get some experience with these things. Let's try to take advantage of uh, the open source community, all the energy there, and let's try to advance the pace of standards by combining open standards and open source. We held the first one ever. Um, don't know if you realize this, but the IETF doesn't have hackathons. This was the first ever. We had it in Dallas in March, and uh, and it was it was a huge success. Um, these are the technologies that we focused on. Just like here, we had a set of technologies from Cisco. There, we had a techno set of technologies that uh, various things that are being done within the IETF. Uh, actually, it's interesting if you look at this set. A lot of them we have stuff here in the DevNet zone. Uh, about them. Beer, I think I can see their demo thing right there. In fact, their mug is on my screen, and you can see it over there. Um, we had a bunch around open daylight. We've had talks about NetConf and Yang here, service function chaining. So you can see um, that that's one of the reasons Cisco is so interested in the IETF and the hackathon there is that there is a big overlap, right? And we participate very actively in the standards and in the open source communities around that. So. Uh, the results of the hackathon I have here, I'm not going to really go through these, but just to summarize, we had really interesting uh, projects, useful results, which really did meet our goal of being fed back into the, uh, the working groups that we're meeting that week. And all of this is open source, all the results, you can download the links. Uh, in some case, the code's very usable by itself. In some case, you're probably going to have to work in conjunction with the guys who were working on that project. Uh, in some cases, like Spudlib, that was an open source project that was started by two guys. And uh, by the end of the hackathon, it was up to six contributors to it. I'm not sure where it's at now, but that's a great example of the type of thing we're trying to do um, with these hackathons. I mentioned it was successful. It was so successful that uh, we're going to have another one. So it was announced right at IETF 92, which is where we had the first one. At the end of that meeting, they announced that we were going to have another one in Prague. So uh, the date's up there. It's coming up a little over a month, I guess. And uh, it'll be bigger and better, uh, even more technologies. Here's the list of technologies. You'll see some or duplicates from before, because we're going to continue to work on them. We've added a few more things, mostly around um, IoT, and uh, this HTTP2 is a pretty big one. There's a lot of people with interest in that. So it, it's growing. More people are getting interested. The, the first one, we had 40 to 50 people. This next one uh, looks like we're going to have closer to 100. So hopefully, if you're interested in that, there's a link there where you can see about um, uh, signing up for that. Hey, so Chuck, Charles, so yep. the, the, the scope of those seemed a bit different, right? We, we tended to come up with like an end user solution potentially. What's the, what's the scope of what their contributions look like or what the, how, the, how are they judged uh, against this, these technologies when they compete? The way they're, they're mainly judged is if I go back, let me go back a few slides to say why we're, why we're doing this in the first, in the first place. Um, really, it's, it's this goal, to advance the pace and relevance of IETF and to uh, augment the RFCs we have with, with running code and also to attract young and old developers. So you kind of, that's, you could almost think of it as different categories that we're judging these things on. Um, there's actually no prize money. We, we did have uh, little giveaways, like we had Raspberry Pis, we had laser pointers, um, we had, uh, kilowatt uh, devices, just kind of techy, nerdy gadgets. Because uh, it, so it was nothing that was truly valuable. It was just more of a bragging rights if you won. And um, so really, it, it, it's how well you advance standards more so than a business model or anything like that. Uh, any other questions on the IETF hackathon before I move on to the, the next thing? Uh, sorry, question to, no? We could get a mic to you or you could come up. Sorry, you want to come up closer? I, I can hear you, I can repeat your question.
What? Is this software like a hack prevention type thing? Is it a hack, like a security thing, like hack prevention? No, no, it just has to do with, um, we use the term hackathon, but you're not actually necessarily trying to hack into anything. Although there are, I don't think I have anything specifically around security here. There are a lot of, there is a lot of work in the ITF around security. So yeah, yeah, but, but this is really a hackathon in terms of hacking on code, not necessarily breaking into anything. Yeah, <laughs> good clarifying question though. Um, yeah. Okay, so another thing we're doing with, within DevNet, um, newcomer training for OpenStack. Uh, I don't, did any of you hear about that? Did any of you attend it? It was at the same time as the hackathon, so it would have been hard for you guys. You, you had to make that tough choice between the two and you, you kind of time shared. <laughs> so on Saturday, it was a, an all day training with uh, the goal being not just to teach you about OpenStack. We were kind of assuming you had some knowledge of OpenStack. We briefly covered that. But really the goal of it was to teach you how to be, uh, become a, a contributor to OpenStack. It's what we call upstream contributions, where you write code which gets committed back into the OpenStack code base. So uh, what we did was people came in, we uh, had them download a VM, showed them how to access uh, DevStack using Git, they built it, we help them get all the tooling they needed, and perhaps more importantly, how to interact with the community. The OpenStack community has certain tools that they use, certain processes that they have in place, a way they go about creating blueprints and getting those blueprints adopted, and then creating projects and then committing code for those projects. So we went over all that with the idea being that when you go into one of these open source projects, you don't just need to understand the code and what it does, you also need to understand the way the community works because you're becoming a part of that community. So the best way to become a contributor is understand the community, get to know the people, and then start uh, figuring out the way you can help the community move forward. And there's lots of ways you can do that. You can commit code, you can do bug, like uh, documentation bug fixes. There's lots of ways to contribute. It doesn't uh, have to necessarily be code related. And uh, yeah, the tagline there, that's what it was really all about. Learn it, use it, so start using OpenStack and then improve it. That's what we were trying to do. And then I just kind of want to wrap it up by telling you about the, the Open Source Dev Center. I've been talking about IETF and open source code there. I mentioned OpenStack, newcomer training, that's all open source. So we have a Dev Center within Cisco that's devoted to everything Cisco does around open source. Uh, if you go there, you'll see all the projects we're contributing to in open source, uh, what areas of those projects we're active in, how we use those open, that open source within our products and our solutions. Uh, we have forums where you can work side by side with uh, Cisco engineers and with other people who are active in that community. The developer VMs, I, I mentioned, a, the one I mentioned was uh, just an example of, if you've ever looked at OpenStack, Open Daylight, um, there's a lot of tooling that you need to get up and running and as a, to start developing in that environment. You can set that all up natively on your machine, but in many cases, especially when you're just getting started with it, it's much, much easier and more efficient to just download a VM that has all the tools that you need. You just spin that up on your own laptop and you have a complete development environment. Um, and so we provide those within DevNet. And then I already mentioned the, the hackathon, the newcomer training, but if you go to that, um, the Open Source Dev Center, you'll see all the other developer-related events we have going on in open source. And uh, I, uh, that was it. I yeah, think, can, Mike? Can I use your computer? I'm just going to go to the web really quickly. Yep. Um, if you want more information about the hackathons, obviously the, the results are already posted on to this. Or the results are already posted on the DevNet if you want to check them out. But you can also go to hackathon.cisco.com. Right now we have no upcoming events, but 
uh, any of the events that we do hold will be up on this site, and you can keep track of them that way. So, and it's, if you're on DevNet, you'll probably get alerted to it, especially if it's in your neighborhood that a new hackathon's coming your way, and any any communications from Charles about the IET one, IETF ones will come your way as well. So that's all I had to show. Yeah. I'll go ahead. I'll run The criteria, it was out, actually outlined in participant agreement, but it was, it was generally five things. There was no import uh, tied to all of them, but it was business potential, user experience, uh, use of Cisco technology, originality, innovation. There was, there was five criteria, but you can translate that however you want, and they were allowed to weight it themselves. They, when we went to the judging deliberation, it was really up to them to kind of keep in their mind what was important to them and float their top scores to the, to the top, and then we deliberated further on which ones we thought were the best, and for, what, for various reasons. And it's, again, they could have just come from something that influenced their decision, or they could have like a long-standing feeling about it, but we tried to get a mixture of people uh, from our group and outside in San Diego to kind of really help influence what the what the solution would be and how they would judge against it. But again, it's you start at that top level. We said, wow, oh, we got a lot of technology in Cisco. Let's just reduce it to IOE and cloud. And we still ended up with like nine different technologies. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> kind of a kind of a big mind swell. But if you're really interested in one or two of them, just focus on those and try and build something out of it. And that's what uh, it wasn't guaranteed that if you used all the technologies that we offered, that you would win. Uh, was there a higher weight if you used more, more than two or three? No, no, that, that was, it was a requirement. There was, uh, it, it was not unknown or un, how do I want to say this? It was, it was to your advantage to use as many as you could, but it really is. Uh, it was it an interesting use of it? Did it have business potential? Was it something that we've seen before, right? And that's that's kind of the originality, the business potential, and the user experience piece. That's that's why it's not really weighted evenly, uh, but it's different per judge, right? Uh, somebody who's a little bit closer to the academic side, which we had Professor Gupta come in. Uh, you know, he he looked at some of the solutions maybe with. Uh, less weight for Cisco pro products and actually more on what it was doing. Good question. Any other questions? Excellent. We tried to keep it as fair as possible, so we don't, we had a zero to 10 scoring, but it's relative per judge. You know, we can't. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, and and again, we don't want to. We know how the world works. We don't want to exclude other technologies from the mix. Uh, we do try to get you to use maybe a Cisco cloud, and rather than go out to AWS, but you don't have to. You're not going to get penalized for using something because in in a 24 hours, sometimes you have to lean on the skills that you already have or you bring in, and not learn something new. Maybe one or two technologies is good to learn, but the rest of them are difficult. So yeah. And now I see three hackathon people here. <laughs> Back for more. Oh yeah, yeah. You can go check it out. <laughs> uh, so there's yeah, eventually will be uh, uh, there's a there was obviously a videographer that had went around. So you probably there'll be a, a follow up video hopefully soon, maybe next week, and you'll be able to spot yourself uh, working hard throughout the night. <laughs> All right. If there are any other questions, I think that's it. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.